Hi everyone, this is Diana. Welcome to Sew in Common. Uh, this week's video is a companion piece to the new information sheet. It's actually more of a packet that um, has been published over on the website for the quilt along. This is information sheet two and there's quite a bit in this one because it's all about the fabric and the measurements. And the body of this video is going to be going over that a little bit more with you. But I have a few kind of general things to talk about with you as well today. So welcome everyone to Sew in Common, home of the Build-A-Quilt system, where we create our quilt tops with our embroidery machine. It's a fun way to piece your quilts if you're new to quilting or if you've been quilting for a while and maybe your hands are bothering you, um, you just want to try something new, sometimes that's really a lot of fun, um, then this could be the method for you. This year's Quilt Along Starlight Star Bright, this is, we're calling it a prep session because um, last week there was an information sheet. It was truly a sheet. It was just a little bit of info. This one has a lot more info. And later in the video, you're going to find out when we're going to be starting the actual sewing because it's coming up very quickly. Um, and all of the blocks that you need to use on your embroidery machine are free over at our website. I'll talk about that again at the towards the end of the video. So stay with us um, so that you can catch all of that information at the end as well. And thank you all for joining us. Um, our group is growing so quickly. Our, my channel is growing so quickly, I should say. And I just want to thank you all so much. I think we're over 27,000 subscribers now. That blows me away. So I always want to take a moment and say welcome to all of our new subscribers. Welcome back to all of our uh, Sew in Common family that's been with us for a while. And um, I hope you enjoy today's video. So let's get into it, okay? So the um, Starlight Starbright Quilt Along is coming along in just a couple of weeks, to be honest. Um, and so this is today's packet, free over on the website. If you have not picked up information sheet one yet, you're going to want to do that as well, because that's going to tell you what blocks you need to download from the website and all that. And like I said, they're free. So just go ahead and download them. We have lots of free blocks over there on the website from this year, 2023, because we have been doing kind of a block of the month and those have all been free this year. So let me just briefly um, go through the information sheet with you before we go to the main hunk of the video. So really, there's only a few supplies you're going to need. You're going to need your rotary cutter. And for cutting my fabric, I use a regular 45 millimeter round blade. I don't use the pinking blade that I normally talk about. I save that for trimming out of the hoop and trimming up my squares to get rid of bulk. But for cutting my fabric, I just use a regular 45 millimeter blade. So whatever you have available will work fine though. Okay, and then you're going to need some cutting rulers. So if you're cutting from yardage and all of that information is in this packet, um, I suggest if you have one, get out your big boy, your six, six and a half by 24. Uh, that way you can make one big long cut, that kind of a thing, as you go across the, um, the fabric. Um, if you don't, and I talk about this in later in the video, if you're going to use fat quarters, which is perfectly okay, um, I like using up my flat quarters on quilts a lot of the time, then a 12 by 6 would work great for you. This is one of my favorites. And so... Um, you're going to need something like that. And the six inch is helpful because you're going to be cutting five, six, and seven inch blocks. Okay. All of that's explained in the video. And then your rotary cutter. Then um, you're going to want some organizational kind of things. Bins, these mesh zippy bags. So you can see right here, uh, this one is 
this is all of my pieces for block one, all of the block ones. So what you're cutting is going to get you through the whole quilt for that particular block. And then this is block two, block three, and block four. So that's how I've organized them so that I know that I have the pieces I need. And then when I sit down here at the embroidery machine, I grab one bag and then I just get my stabilizer and start cranking those out. Okay. So, or if you don't have these kinds of bags, which I love, they're so inexpensive on Amazon. And I like to keep them open just a little bit to let some air get in there. So everything is breathing and you don't, I mean, you don't have to do it just a little bit. So air gets in. That's all. Um, I love these. They're easy to store um, over in by my machine or over by my cutting table or wherever I need to take them. Like I said, when I need one, I just grab it and go. Um, and <clears throat> they're color coded too. the different sizes have different and things or if you get all one size and you, you're getting multiples in there they'll have like three or four in each of the colors so that's a great way you notice on this one mine are all hot pink so that was just happens to be the size that i picked in the color but so they're super easy to organize with but you can also do bins you know little plastic bins little cloth bins whatever you want to do but find some way to organize by block. I think that's going to be the easiest way for you to do it. Okay. Now, um, let's see. You'll need a pen or a pencil because you'll want to make some check marks as you go, things like that. You might want to write notes. So have that handy. And of course, your fabric. So you all know that I'm doing the dark, medium, light. You'll see that fabric again in uh, later in the video. Um, but I and I talk in the video as well about if you want to do all scrappy, I give a couple tips and tricks. So stay tuned for that. That way you'll um, you'll get the the best kind of info that I can give you on if you want to do all scrappy stars. OK, and I also pulled today a packet of Christmas fabrics because we are getting into the holidays by the time this is done, we'll be almost to Thanksgiving here in the U.S., which is what the last Thursday of November. And so if you wanted to make this as a holiday quilt, you certainly could. And so with our light, medium, dark scenario for this, I would choose this gray with this as my medium. And then I work off of that. So I have red and green in there. So I have this green, so that could be my dark and my medium. And then I love this little Swiss polka dot. That could be my light. So that could be my dark, medium, and light. Or if I didn't want to do the green, I have this little dot here. The dots are multicolored. I love this fabric. And then that could be my dark and my medium. And I could pull that Swiss dot up again for my light. So you could kind of mix and match there if you wanted to do holiday colors. Um, so I wanted to give you that as another option because we haven't really talked about the idea of a holiday version of it, but that's certainly what you could do. All righty. And then your, your next page in the packet is going to tell you about the fabrics, and then it's going to tell you how much of each fabric that you're going to need for the entire top of the quilt. And you'll notice there's no binding or backing recommendations here yet because we're going to talk about that later during the quilt along. And I've left you lines here and boxes so that you can write in for your particular fabric, your particular idea um, that you'll need. So that's that next page. And then your next four pages are your cutting instructions for each of the four blocks. So there's the April block of the month, which was the Ohio star. You see this, you see all this information. And then the second block is the inspired star. The one that kind of looks like a Lemoyne star. Go back and rewatch that video. We talk a little bit about the history of the Lemoyne star and why we decided to call ours the inspired star. 
And then the Sawtooth Star is block three. And block four is our February crossover star. So you get what to cut, what size, and you get any additional subcut information there. And then the very last page is just the final, if you need to contact us, blah, 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 kind of stuff, right? But that's your packet. So this one, super important as well as the first one, because the first one's going to tell you what, what blocks to go grab and a little bit of more information. And the start date is also in that packet. All righty. Okay, everybody, that's what I want to tell you about now. Now let's go on to the video section that I pre-recorded about the actual cutting, the announcement of the date and things like that. And then we'll come back at the end and just wrap up, okay? Hi everybody, Diana here at Sew Common. This video goes along with information sheet two for the Quilt Along Starlight Starbright. You can find your information sheet at www.sewincommon.com and if you don't already have the first information sheet, grab that one as well. Um, that way you'll be all caught up with um, everything that's out there to prep for the um, quilt along. Because, dun, 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 let's get a little drum roll. Here it comes. The day we're going to start sewing is October 13th. That is a Friday. I know. How could it have turned out to be any better, right? Friday the 13th. It'll be fine. It'll be grand. We'll love it. No problem. If you're superstitious, I'm so sorry. Um, um, but I think it'll be fine. You can wait and start yours the next day, I guess. That would be fine. Now, what will happen is I will put out at midnight of the day a video for what we're doing in that part of the quilt along. Um, so just like I do with Sunday nights. Sunday morning, you wake up and the Sunday video is there. It'll be the same way with the quilt along. At the end of our quilt along, on the last day, I am considering doing a live. Um, I want to know from you, It's so that would be the fifth week because it's going to run for five weeks. I want to know from you, would you like a live? Would you come to a live so you can ask your questions, things like that? Um, if nobody's interested in a live, then I'll do another pre-recorded one because it, it doesn't matter to me. But if there's a live and nobody comes, then, you know, it's just like my doing it pre-recorded. So you leave me a note in the comments on this video whether you would like a live for um, the fifth week, the final week of the quilt along. And I need at least like, you know, several people to answer. If one person answers, that's not going to sway me one way or the other. So put your idea, your thought in the comments. I know you've got them, so put them in there. All right, so today's video is going to be about the fabric. Um, information sheet two is all about how much fabric do you need? How does it cut down? How much goes for each block? All of that info. Now, you can see, I'll show you my little notebook. I have my little, this is a new notebook, so it's barely got anything in it. I've got lots of these, and they're like full of stuff. I staple stuff in them and glue stuff in them and write all my notes. But this one, I have how many pages? One, two, three, four pages. And I know I like peeled like three pages out last night when I was doing um, the final recalculation to make sure I had everything correct. So there are, um, these are all my notes on the calculations for how much fabric. I won't talk about exact amounts that you need in this video. It's all in the information sheet. But I did want to talk to you a little bit about the fabric and how I go about breaking everything down, okay? So we know that we need a dark, a medium, and a light. We've discussed that before, right? Now I've chosen three solids with prints on them. So you can't, even my light is a tone on tone print. You can do this quilt all in solids if you want to. That's not a problem at all. Um, you can also do it completely scrappy. If you're like, oh, I want each star to be different. I've got lots of fat quarters left over that I want to get rid of. Or 
I have yardage from Christmas last year. I'd like to put that in. Excuse me, I've got something in my eye. Oh, sorry. I, I apologize. Um, I've got stuff left over from last year, and I want it to be on the quilt. That's fine. The only thing I recommend if you're going to do scrappy is your light fabric ends up being your background. So I'm going to suggest to you that you use the same light throughout the quilt. Everything else can be whatever you want, right? So there's three total colors. So two different, a dark and a medium for different for every one of the stars. That would be a stunning quilt. It would be absolutely beautiful. So go for it. I'd love to see that um, in the finished. Um, I'd love to see somebody do it as, um, as a scrappy. In fact, I'm thinking about making another one as well in the scrappy. I've got so much fabric that I have little bits of here and there. I think it in the scrappy would be beautiful, but I thought doing it all in three specific colors would be easier for you to see it um, as we're doing the quilt along. So if you do scrappy, I just recommend, if you don't want to do the same color background and just have a hodgepodge, that would be pretty. I mean, I'm I think that would be great too. But my recommendation is that you at least do your light color the same. How these fabrics are denoted in the information is dark is color A, medium is color B, and light is color C, okay? So that's how that will read. All of that's in your info sheet, okay? You're going to notice in the info sheet, you're going to be cutting five, six, and seven inch squares. And then some of them you'll cut on the diagonal. It's just like when we do uh, any other build a quilt, we start with a square. If we need triangles, we cut it on the diagonal. If we need rectangles, we cut it down the middle. It will tell you all of that in this info sheet, okay? So you don't have to worry about that. But that being said, Let's talk about the idea of the cutting. So I'm cutting from yardage. That's just how I chose to do this since I'm doing three curated colors. But I know some folks have very small cutting areas and I know that some of you who are new get overwhelmed when things are big or bulky. It becomes a little problematic for you. Don't worry about that. Do it with fat quarters. And what I mean by that is that when you get your yardage, ask the shop to cut that yardage into fat quarters for you. Now, typically any good shop is going to do that for you. Most of them will do it for free. Some might give you a small charge to, to do that additional cutting for you. But if it's easier for you, then it would be worth it. And it's usually not very much. Usually, like the shop I go to, if I want them to cut my, my yardage into fat quarters, they don't charge me extra. I just pay by the yard, whatever that would be, and then they just slice it up into fat quarters for me. Or they let me stand there at the table and slice it up myself because they've got the big, big cutting table. So if that works for you, do it. That won't be a problem at all. Okay, so I am cutting mine down. So here I have a stack of six inch squares. Those go with block one. They're color A, because A is the dark. Color A, I needed 16 of them. Now you're gonna be making four of this first block specifically. And so I needed 16 of them done. What I do is then I would move on and I would cut my color B, my medium color. And then I would move on and cut my color C, my light color, only for block one. Then once I have everything cut for block one, I like to put it in these zippy mesh bags that I've shown you before, right? That way, and then I put like a sticky or I put a little index card in there that says, Starlight, Star Bright, Quilt Along, Block One, Cut Pieces, all in there. Then I know when I go to stitch my block ones, 
I just grab this. I don't have piles and piles of cut fabric going, what do, did I count? Oh, uh, you know, it can get confusing. Again, doing it in an organized manner is going to keep the confusion level way down. Okay. So that's how I like to do it. But of course you can, if you like, you can, um, do it in little bins. I just would just put what you need for each one in a separate bin. It's just going to be easier. Okay, not a problem. Now let's talk about why five, six, and seven inch. Because some of our blocks are made with 16 segments, and some of our blocks were made with as little as nine segments. So that means your starting pieces are a little bit different sized. So don't let that worry you. In fact, block one, block two, and block three are all cut with six inch squares to start, but it's at block C or block four. Am I right about this? I am. Block four is where we get to, you'll be cutting seven inch and five inch blocks because that's the crossover star and it's created a little bit differently. And don't worry, when I do those videos for you, I am going to piece out one block of each one so that you see it from soup to nuts and know how that goes, okay? Um, that way you're not confused. You'll have the digital files in the, um, in the downloads that you got of the four free stars, but the instructions you can follow the videos that I'm going to do for each block. That way you'll see it from soup to nuts because I will be, I'll be the first to be a little transparent. My patterns back earlier in the year, I didn't have my templates, my style of doing them down the best yet. And some of them could be a little confusing. Sorry about that. We, we were in the learning process, right? But now that I have a very dynamic, specific system that I use, all of these videos will be done that way. And that way it'll be easier for everybody. Now, tools, let's talk about that real briefly. 40 millimeter rotary cutter. Um, I just use a regular round rotary cutter. I don't use my pinking rotary cutter for cutting my squares. I save that for trimming and getting bulk out of my seams later on. Now, you're going to need, if you're going to use yardage and not fat quarters, you're going to need probably a six um, by 24 ruler. That helps because it's long enough this way to go across your fabric and, um, and you only make one big slice to cut your rows. So what I do is I start out by looking to see what I need to cut and I cut my rows of fabric. Then I stack them two rows at a time so I have stacks of four or so that I have four layers and then I cut them down into their squares. A Little bit easier that way. I just make sure that everything is lined up on the edge. If I need to trim it and straighten it off, I will. So let's just move that out of the way here. Let me bring in my smaller one and we'll just show you what that's like. Let me move the camera down just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so here I am. If my edges were not straight, and I can kind of see that by laying, uh, and they're not, this one is not, it's off just a little bit, then I can take my ruler and I typically, when I trim, some people literally trim the hair off the edge. I trim a quarter inch every time. It's just an easier way to do it. And I take my, my rotary cutter and I straighten that right up. That's waste. Off in the bin it goes. And now I'm all nice and straightened up. And I know for this particular one, I want to cut six inch squares. So I'm going to lay my ruler here at the edge of my fabric because I know I'm all straightened up. And you would do this if you were working with 
when you're working with the bigger yardage as well. If you need to straighten an edge, go ahead and do that, that straightening cut. And here's a clue or a tip. Every so often, check your edge. You might every so many cuts. Usually about every fourth cut, I need to do a little bit of a straightening trim because, you know, eventually I get wonky and I go off to the side a little bit and it gets a little, you know, not straight anymore. So if you find that's happening, just re-straighten your edge and everything will be fine. So then I come here and I start cutting. Now, if I was stacked with these, I would be maybe cutting four at a time because they would be stacked, but now I'm just gonna re-line this up with my edge. Remember, I'm a lefty if this looks confusing. And the reason I don't worry about doing it folded, because I know this makes people crazy sometimes because you can get a little wrinkle here. Even if I did, I would just go press it out, but, um, the reason I don't worry about it is because you have a little bit left over. It's not going to equally come out exact so that you're like right on the edge here. That's okay. Because when I unfold this, can I one, two, three, four, five? I can get not six left. I got like a little over six and a half and it's not straight, but I could straighten this up and I could still get another five by five inch block out of that. And if I don't need that, if I look down through my list and I don't need a five by five of, of A or B or C, whichever one I'm cutting, then I put those in my scrap buckets because then I have five inch blocks ready to go when I'm doing other things that require me to start with a five inch block. So really easy. And let's just rem let me remind you of this. You do not need to add to the dimensions you see in the instructions, okay? Here, let me put this back up. I'm lobbing half my head off. Oh, there we go, that should be better. Um, you do not have to add in extra fabric. The fabric dimensions that I put in the cut sheet, or in the um, information sheet for you, has plenty of fabric for your seam allowance and a little beyond, just like I do um, in the Build-A-Block uh, Basic Set 1 or any of the other patterns, there's always plenty of fabric. So you don't need to build in. Get what it calls for and you'll have plenty. If you're like me and you know that you tend to waste like an eighth of a yard of fabric every time you start a project just from like your head isn't quite in the groove yet, then, you know, add that eighth of a yard on to your totals. But if you're good about doing your cutting properly and being in the right head space, don't worry about it because you've got more than plenty in here. All right, everybody. So that is our week two information about fabrics, cutting, get your information sheet two. And if you don't have information sheet one yet, go ahead and grab it. And um, next week... Um, next week is our last week before the week where we start. Yay. So next week we'll have one third information sheet to come out. I'll kind of wrap up anything else that you all might need or anything else I need to let you know about. In fact, there's going to be a giveaway at the end of the quilt along. I'll tell you a little bit about it right now. At the end of the quilt along, I'm going to give you all until Christmas Day. No, I'll give you through Christmas Eve, okay, or through uh, New Year's Eve, to get the top done and post a picture of the top because I have a big prize package. And just one of the things that are going to be given away is a free year subscription to the National Quilt Museum in Paducah, Kentucky. And then we're going to have a second prize and a third prize. And those are all, they're not judged prizes. They're just going to be, everybody's name is going to go into a bucket and we'll pull names, okay? So that is an encouragement and incentive for you all to get out there and post those photographs of your finished quilt top. Doesn't have to be quilted, doesn't have to be bound. Um, 
If it is, that's fantastic. But if it isn't, that's fine. We just want to see those beautiful cool tops um, that you all have worked on. And that's why we're getting it finished in, you know, going through it all in November so that if you need a little extra time before the holidays, you can, or if you, you know, like I know my husband always has off between Christmas and New Year's, their, their plant shuts down, um, kind of shuts down, but he has some extra days. The company gives them a couple of extra days off. Cool. He does his thing, I come in here, and I can just sit and quilt and do my thing. Um, and so if you know you have extra time like that, then I want to give you that time. But that's just one of the prizes that's coming in the prize package for whoever wins. And we're going to do a couple of, we're going to do a couple of drawings. The prizes won't be the same for all of them, but um, they'll be good. That's all I'm going to say for now. All right, everybody. Mwah. Have a great weekend. Get your information sheets. Get your fabric because after today, you've got two weeks and then we start quilting, ladies. We start piecing our quilts together. And um, if you've done these blocks during the year, you're going to knock them right out. If you've waited to do this until now, that's all right. They're still easy. You'll still get them done. If you have any questions, any comments, please leave them here. Please, please, I beg of you, leave a comment and let me know if you want that fifth week to be live or not, okay? Because I won't go live. There's no need to go live if nobody wants to come to a live. But I would love it. I'd love to do a live. I'd love to be live with you all. So let me know. All right, everybody. Have a great weekend. And until next time, so life beautiful. Okay, everybody. So I hope that was helpful for you. Um, you saw my light, medium, and dark colors um, again. And if you want to do that fabric or try to find that fabric, I'm going to list it in the description of this video for you. That way you can try and find it if you want to. Or find something similar if you want those colors. There's lots of fabrics out there in that colorway. So if you can't find these exact ones, find something similar, okay? Like even, do you see this dark one here in this uh, square? Even something like that would, could go for the dark fabric. It would be really pretty. Um, so, but I will list them in the description of this video so that you can try and find them. They're, they are Moda fabrics. Um, all right. And what do you think of our start date? October 13th. Friday the 13th. Did I pick it or did I pick it? That's all right. It'll be fine. If you don't want to start it that day, just move it one day. But we're going to, the first video for the first uh, part of the quilt along is going to post at midnight, um, uh, Friday the 13th. So from the 12th into the 13th, right there at that minute, just like I do the Sunday videos, like I said. And that's when it's going to post. And that's when we're going to start making this gorgeous quilt along. It's or this gorgeous quilt. It's only five weeks. Um, and what do you think of the prize idea? Are you excited? Um, so if by, let me just explain it a little bit more. If by the end of the year, so if by say I wake up on January 1st on New Year's Day, anybody who's posted a picture of their quilt top and i thought about this i'd like to see them finished but anybody who posts a picture of their quilt in process now please more than one block okay let's you know let's be honest but as long as you're making progress in it Take a picture. Hey, I've got blocks one done and I've got block. I decided to do blocks three next, you know, whatever. Post a couple of those pictures. All of those photos are going to go into a drawing and we're going to give away not one, not two. We have decided to give away three memberships, year-long memberships to the National Quilt Museum in Paducah, Kentucky. 
it was such a thrill to be down there earlier back in the summer in June when my husband and I were there. And I thought about this then. How could I, how could I gift that to some of you, that experience? And so I thought, what about as a giveaway from the quilt along? And here's the, the thing about that membership. It's a whole year. You get really nice discounts on anything in their gift shop. Even if you can't make it to Paducah, um, which I highly, highly recommend, um, you will get notified like when they're having contests, when they're asking for submissions, all that kind of information. And you'll be up to date on all of that stuff. Um, and if you go to Paducah, then you can go to Hancock's of Paducah, which is like the Disneyland of fabric. And go in and have a really good time there too. Make it like a whole weekend or something like that. And trust me, my husband actually had fun when we went. He was super impressed by the quilt as art. All of that, those art pieces, he loved them. So um, it's not it's not just something maybe you want to do on your own. Maybe you want to take a family member with you. Um, Maybe you want to take your bestie with you. Maybe your bestie likes quilts, but you're like, I'm not doing this quilting thing. The taker just for the experience of seeing all that beautiful art because it's drop dead gorgeous. So anyway, we're going to be giving away three, one, two, three, three free year long memberships to the National Quilt Museum. So um, once we start making our quilts, get going, ladies, because um, you'll have until the end of the year to post your pictures. I wanted to give you a little time because I know we're running into the um time for the end for the holidays all the holidays right i mean we have tons of holidays here at our house so um i wanted to give you enough time Alrighty. so remember the name of the quilt along is starlight star bright so when you post your pictures please do a hashtag starlight star bright or starlight star bright qal would something like that. And that way it will also be easy for me to find the photos. You can just post them on our Facebook page. So in common, that would be fine as well. Um, and to get your information sheet, information sheet one, information sheet two, and your blocks, if you haven't gotten them yet, just go to our website, www.soincommon. Go into the shop button at the top of the page and you'll see all the different pieces. Just find the ones you need, click them. They're all free and check out and they'll all um, be downloads that you can just download the information. You download your design set. So if you have, um, when you uh, download the design set, you'll unzip a folder and all of the files uh, for that particular block will be there for the different machine brands. So if you have a baby like a Janome, a Fafa, who's grown a Viking, whatever, you'll see the ending, the file ending that you use. Like I use PES, you might use EXP or JEF, something like that. Those will all be there. You just click on the one you want, drag it into your um, USB, or if you do a Bluetooth transfer, however you transfer it, um, it'll be super easy for you. And then you'll have the files that you need for those blocks. Pretty easy, right? Yeah, I hope you all are getting excited. I think some of you are because I've been noticing a lot of uptick of folks downloading the patterns and the info sheets. So excellent. I can't wait to do this with you. And there was one more thing that I asked you earlier in the video, and that was, do you want the fifth and final week to be a live where I do it live? That way I can see questions and stuff like that. If you do then you must comment here on this video, this video, okay? And I need to see more than one or two people say yes or no, um, because if there's no interest in the live, then I'll just post the video again, like I have been doing. But I know some of you have been wanting lives and I'm gonna start doing more of them. So I thought a nice way to end the quilt along would be to do it as a, as a live. But you let me know if you want to do it or not. It's your choice. Very good. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Um, gosh, I hope I haven't missed anything. I'm going to put the fabric info in the description for you. Oh, sorry if you're hearing the um, 
lawnmower. My husband's out mowing the grass. <laughs> oh, one thing I should let you all know. Um, we found out yesterday that our sister-in-law is in the hospital and she's quite ill. Um, and it's kind of a, a touchy scenario at this point. Um, if anything happens um, and next week's video or something can't go live uh, or can't be posted, I will let you know um, as soon as I know if I, if I won't be here next week, if I have to go out, if we go out there for any reason at all to help or, you know, God forbid for the, the worst part of that, which I don't think will be the case, but I wanted you all to know. All right. And of course our family, um, if you are someone who says a prayer now and then we would appreciate your thoughts and prayers more than I can say for her. Um, uh, she is the wife of my husband's oldest brother. Um, she's very dear. She's a mom of three beautiful adult children and several gorgeous grandchildren. So we wish her all the best and we're praying for her recovery. Um, and um, if you wouldn't mind saying a prayer for her, we'd appreciate it so much. All right, everybody. Um, we love you all to death here at Sew in Common. You know that. And we would love to have you as part of the Sew in Common family. Please click subscribe if you haven't already and click the little bell to set your notifications. Um, even if you're not part, if you haven't subscribed and you keep watching every week, um, you're still part of the family, but we'd love to have you subscribe. That way you get all the updates and stuff when they come out. Um, so please do that. And until next week, um, I have kind of a fun video for us next week. Um, a video that's not going to have anything to do with the quilt along, um, but it's something um, I'm just not even going to tell you about. It. It's just going to be kind of a fun video um, for us next week. And of course, we'll have little videos throughout the week, like we always do. Check out the shorts videos. I've started a fabric of the day short video where I talk about a color or an idea or something about a particular fabric or fabric line. So you'll want to check those out. Maybe those will help inspire you for the fabrics for your quilt, uh, Starlight, Starbright for the quilt along. Until next time, everybody. So life beautiful. Bye for now.